Hey guys, I'm Taylor, if you don't know me. Um, and then we have Troy here and Raven and Joy. And we're all P3s um, and we're in Rokai, so that's kind of why we're doing this. <laughs> um, so basically this is gonna be really informal. Um, I'm just gonna have everyone stay muted um, just so we can make sure that people don't get talked over. And then each of us on the panel will have a chance to talk about um, whatever topic I bring up. And then we can have a Q&A session at the end um, or in between each topic. And also feel free to send questions in the chat um, if you think of them and you don't wanna unmute, that's perfectly fine. Um, you can ask questions about literally anything. That's what we're here for. So um, we're gonna try to like put ourselves in your shoes when we were P1s. You don't really know what to expect from an SBT. Um, we do have a little bit of a different perspective though because we started with pain SBT and I believe now they do that differently. Um, so that's not exactly the same, but you will take that class. And then it is important to remember that everyone has different learning styles. So we'll probably all give you completely different advice, but you really just need to figure out what works for you. So first, an SBT is um, system-based therapeutics. So basically what that is, is you take the body system and then you learn about the things that can go wrong with it. So you learn about all the disease states um, and how to treat it. So within each SBT, you'll have different teachers teach um, different topics. So you won't have the same teacher for the whole class. Um, and then when those classes start, they'll start with a pathophysiology review, which is things that you've probably had in the past, but it's much more in depth. And then after that, you'll kind of go over the drugs involved with treating those disease states. Um, you'll go over like the med chem, the nature of the drugs, including the mechanisms of action, side effects, contraindications, all that stuff. And then you'll actually get into the therapeutics, which is how the drugs are actually used in practice. So a lot of times the people that teach that are gonna be people from Ruby that actually work in those areas. Um, so they'll come over and teach that section of the course just so that you can see how it happens in the real world. And then within those classes, you've had IRATs and TRATs um, in your self-care course, I believe. So you'll do that again in SBTs. Normally, if you're in person, you'll be put into a group um, and then you'll stay with that group for um, that whole semester, I believe. And you'll use your group to take the TRATs. There are exams and then you'll have a practicum every week, which is kind of like your lab um, and that schedule varies. You'll have things like prescription verification, patient counseling, um, patient cases, and next year you'll get to do your patient cases um, with a partner. <clears throat> and then with your SBTs, you will finish the class before you move on to the next one. So you'll take your final exam for the SBT that you're in before you start um, the next one. So you won't have to wait till the end of the semester to take all of your finals, which is kind of nice because then you end up only having one or two exams at the end. So we're going to start getting into the questions here. And like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or speak up. So our first question is, how does studying for SBTs compare to studying for courses in P1 year? So someone can start if they want to. Um, so I don't, I, I don't, I don't really, did you have something planned to say, Joy, whenever you unmuted there? Yeah, I did, but you can go ahead and go first. You, you go ahead, because I, I was just kind of going to ramble, but go ahead. <laughs> I was going to compare. So I remember studying P1 year. I felt it was a bit easier, and I could put things off to the last second and still do very well. But with SBTs, you do have to start studying much ahead of time. Like, you don't want to fall behind in your SBTs. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, there's there's a lot of moving parts with it. Um, I know with like some of the courses, um, P1 year, it's just, it's a lot of like memorization, like facts here and there you have to put together. Um, but with um, SPT, so you have like application-based questions, um, you might be given like a case or something and then have to make a decision based on like pulling knowledge from multiple different areas of lecture and things like that. Um, so it's definitely a lot, it, it's it's to your benefit um, <clears throat> um, in the short term and in the long run to 
understand the material versus just memorizing it. Um, <clears throat> oh, I got something on my throat. Because then you can um, you can apply it versus just like regurgitate facts. Um, yeah, I also want to add that I agree with Joy. Um, P1 year, you can kind of study the night before or two nights before and be fine. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing that in SBTs. I know some people do that, but I don't think it usually has a good outcome. So um, the earlier that you start and staying up to date on things, like I don't know if things will be back in person next year, but I will say that if it's online, try not to avoid listening to lectures, like listen to them every day like you should and don't fall behind because trying to listen to all those lectures and then study right before the exam is just not something that you want to put on yourself. So try to keep up with it if you can, if you're online again. Do you have anything, Raven? No, I was just going to say that like what Troy said about like you need to make sure you actually remember it. P3 year, you have your capstone class, what we're in now. Um, they're going to ask you and you're going to take an exam every single week on different topics together. So if you don't understand and remember anything from when you took it, then you are really setting yourself up for failure. So when you take these classes, keep your notes and make sure that you are actually learning as you go because you're gonna need it later on. Bouncing off of also what Taylor said, I remember P1 year, I could um, get away with sometimes not listening to a lecture and just going off of a PowerPoint while with SBTs, you definitely wanna listen to the lectures if they're posted or go to class and stay on top of that because some things you just can't get away with just looking at the PowerPoint. Um, going back to what Raven said um, with, with your notes and keeping, so I, what I would suggest is keeping organized. Um, so definitely keep like all of your PowerPoints, all of your IRAT uh, study guides and all those things um, in places where they're easily found. Um, sometimes like the lectures will be posted and they'll have like some weird name or something like that too. If you want to change the name of the lectures, like just in your files on your computer, then it'll make it easier for you to go back and reference those. Um, so as as you go along in the curriculum, um, you know, the next two years, you'll have patient cases and they'll become more and more complex and then you'll begin to do them on your own. And it's really nice to go back and be able to find a lecture on like, um, stroke prophylaxis in, a in patients with AFib like, you know, you can just like pull up the lecture and find, uh, you know, like how to treat it and stuff like that. Um, so definitely just like keeping organized with the materials from class, like as you go through, will make it better to use them in the future. So our next question is, what tips do you have to stay organized? And I'll start with this one because I want to preach on it. So when you become a P2, please, please, please make a calendar. Whether you use a physical written calendar or the Google calendar, do it. Um, so I'm a person that's old school. I like to have an actual planner and write things in it. Um, so as soon as your syllabus or schedule comes out for your SBT, fill it in your planner or your calendar or whatever, because things will just start to pile up and you just wanna have that. So on Sunday night, you can open up your planner and say, okay, what do I have every single day this week? So you don't have to go through and flip through all the schedules for your classes every week to figure out what's going on. Um, so that's my biggest thing. Something I'll add to that. Um, if you're like me and you keep a calendar, but sometimes whenever things get moved around, you forget to change them. Um, things can sneak up on you pretty quick. So I would suggest um, how, like, having a group of friends to to like reference and be like, hey, you know, we have this, this and this this week, right? Um, so not like solely relying on them because sometimes, you know, things just don't get brought up. Um, but, you know, just having like a group of people to bounce ideas off of, bounce like the schedule off of just to keep track of everything. And also going off of that, um, just back to studying in general, I think that having 
either like a study partner or like a small study group is something that's really beneficial because I personally feel like when you're studying all the time, you're going to get lonely and you're going to get bored. And sometimes if you have like one or two other people that you study with, they'll keep you on track. So Troy and I study together um, pretty often and we'll sit there and just go over concepts to, with each other and like talk about it out loud. And that really helps because after a while, you're going to get tired of sitting there looking at your notes and your eyes are going to start going crazy. So if you study with people um, and talking about things, that helps as well. Yeah, and Taylor and I, whenever we study together, um, we will look at the same PowerPoint and get like two completely fit different things out of it. Um, like she'll catch details that I just completely gloss over and I can usually like condense big picture concepts into like simple like things to remember, like big picture things to remember. Um, so yeah, finding, finding a study buddy that whose study habits and like learning is like similar to yours um, is definitely beneficial. Um, back to the staying organized thing. I would definitely say one of the biggest things is check your emails regularly um, because a lot of times it'll be like exam day, they'll be like your exams in this room and then like an hour before the exam they're like boom your exams in this room now or there are like last minute changes so you always need to like try and stay up to date. I'm not saying you have to be like looking on your email 24 seven that's a little excessive. Um, but I have added my email to like my phone. So anytime something pops up, I can at least look to see if it's important, if it's immediate or if it's not. So I would definitely say keep up to date with your emails. And um, if you're doing a bunch of leadership positions, make sure you check your calendar before you agree to do something. Um, it can get really hectic very quickly. So make sure that you can actually do it before you say yes. A good idea if you haven't done it already, um, like remove yourself from any spam emails like ads and stuff like that from stores that you've signed up with your Mix account email um, because an important email can slip through the cracks if it's surrounded by like 20% discounts at this store or that store. Um, so, and, and if you remove enough of the spam emails, you can actually set up your phone to get notifications every time you get, you get an email. Um, and then it'll be nice because it'll only be the important ones that you're getting that's making your phone ding and interrupting you whenever you're in real life. Okay, does anyone else have anything to add to that? Does anyone have any questions so far about anything? You can put it in the chat as well. So our next question, I think that this is a big one, is how to maintain confidence if you don't do as well on an exam? How do you bounce back from that? Um, I would definitely say that I'm one of those people that like, I feel a little crushed and in, like inside if I don't get a good grade. Um, I feel like we all are that way. We're in Rokai. That's kind of what Rokai is about. You have some of the best grades. So I feel like we all take that a little personally. Um, but if you do get a bad grade, it is still possible to bring it up. And if there, it's just because you didn't miss something and you still have questions, like Troy and Taylor were talking about, get someone that is willing to study with you. We do offer the tutoring, you can always do that. Um, but just reach out to like classmates or you can go to office hours, but just make sure that if you did do bad on one section, just make sure to review it in depth so that you're good to go for the next time. Just because you get a bad grade on one doesn't determine the grade on the next one. They're usually very completely different and then the comprehensive finals, usually only about 30%, so. Oh, are you gonna go, Troy? Or... <laughs> um, you can go ahead first. Okay, I was gonna say, um, I definitely agree with what Raven said. So the biggest thing that I'll tell you is, if you do bad on an exam, 
it's not the end of the world. You know, you don't give up in the class because it's not, it doesn't mean that you're sunk. Okay. And I will say that I think that um, a lot of times what you get on an exam isn't reflective of your intelligence. It doesn't mean you're dumb or anything like that. It just means that maybe you know, things happen, life happens. Maybe you didn't have a lot of time to study. Maybe you had a family event or something and you didn't have as much time as you would have liked to put into the test. So just because you didn't have as much time or you didn't put in as much effort, it doesn't mean, you know, it's just reflective of effort. It's not reflective of um, how smart you are. So don't let one bad grade let you think that you're not smart enough or you're not good enough because that's never the case. That's kind of the direction I was gonna go with my comment. Um, like your, your self-worth is not like reliant on good test grades. Um, I'm going to be 100% transparent and say, I failed two exams in the same class this semester, um, and got a high A on the cumulative final. Um, so, and, and, and I mean, I am doing fine overall in pharmacy school, like, it sometimes life just happens and life is more important to have your attention than school at some moments. Um, so don't, I don't know, don't worry about one exam grade, just like keep trucking along because the treat each exam like they're independent of one another. Um, so that if you don't do well on one, like it's, it's not determined on how you're going to do on the next one. Yeah, usually if I do bad on an exam, like if it's exam one, I also contact the professor to see if I can review it. So I can also just see what concepts I've missed. And um, sometimes with the final, they'll pull old exam concepts and I've seen that. So like knowing what I did well in and what I didn't do well in kind of also helps me adjust how I study for the next one as well. Even if you do well on exams, um professors are super open to going over the exams with you. Um, it's definitely something important. Like if you feel that you're between two answers on a, on multiple questions or like you weren't quite sure, like honestly, I've gone through old exams and been surprised at answers I've missed and surprised at answers I've gotten correct. So it is helpful to go back and review those exams no matter what grade you get. And also going off of that, if you feel like a question was unfair or things like that, don't be afraid to ask about it because the professors are usually pretty understanding. Um, and if you think that there were maybe two right answers or you're unsure, definitely talk to them about that because a lot of times they will give points back. You know, it's not like all the questions are set in stone. Um, we see that all the time and I'm sure that you have in your classes as well. And then another thing is a lot of times I'll see students that will only focus on the exams and forget about all the other assignments. So I don't think that you should do that either um, because even if you get all A's on the tests, if you do really bad on like all the IRATs and stuff, that's also gonna really bring your grade down. Um, a lot of people will just say, oh, it's just an IRAT, like it doesn't matter. But if you do bad on them all, like it's, they're usually worth at least like 10% of your grade total. So that is a pretty big chunk. Um, so don't push off those other assignments. Um, obviously the exams are more important, but definitely still focus on those too. And as far as the IRATs go, like, like Taylor was saying, like if, if all the IRATs are worth 10% of your grade and there's five IRATs, then it's like, oh, well, this is only worth 2% of my grade. Why am I stressing about it? Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't just not study for it because it benefits you to learn the material as you go along so that that's less studying that you have to do preparing for the final. So then in your eight hour study session, the night before the final, um, you can see some of these concepts and be like, oh yeah, I remember this and that from that IRAT. I know like exams that we've had like two or three IRATs prior to the exam, the IRAT material is the stuff that I like know whenever it comes exam time. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I think that we had an SBT this semester. I think it was oncology where we didn't have IRATs. If I'm, was that the right? Yeah. So I was really sad because usually once I start studying for the exam, there's like at least two or three PowerPoints that I already studied for an IRAT. So then that would just be less on me to study for the exam. But because we didn't have IRATs, I was just like starting from scratch. So studying for those IRATs, like Troy said, really will help you. 
um, in the long run because it's just less studying that you'll have to do before the exam. <clears throat> okay, any other comments on any of that? Okay, um, another common question that we get is which SBTs seem harder than others? So everybody's going to have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I know I had trouble with oncology. I had trouble with nephrology. Um, the ones that I think are kind of, um, they're, they're difficult, but they're like for, for everyone, but not be just content based alone. Um, I'm going to emphasize pain. It, do they have a, like a short course of pain like us? Taylor, do you know? Okay. Well, so our, our pain SBT was two weeks with one exam and like a couple of quizzes. And so if you aren't like hitting the ground running as you're starting pain um, and like working really hard to stay up with the material, then it will be difficult for you to um, do well. Like I know that and though the, if there's only one exam um, and they have the 70% average uh, minimum requirement to pass the course um, like they do in other classes, then you have to get a 70 on the exam to pass the course. And that's not, um, that, that was, that's difficult for some people. Um, and then the other one I want to mention, so pain short, cardio is very- I believe important. they have two exams now, Troy, in pain. Yeah. I think they added one. Um, and then that 70% minimum, that was before COVID, and I think that they took that away now with COVID, but I'm not sure. If they'll be if, adding it back. I'm sure it'll come back um, next year when you guys are in person. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that was just because we're online. Yeah, but so um, in, in contrast to pain being very short, cardio is very long. Um, I know I, and it, it's like right at the end of the semester it was for us. Um, and so towards the end of the semester, you're getting tired and you're looking forward to winter break um, and you've been studying cardiology for five, six weeks, whatever it is. Um, so what I'm trying to say is hit the ground running in pain and pace yourself in cardio because it's a long road. I would say that the hardest ones for me were definitely oncology it's cancer medications. Of course, it's going to be difficult. Um, cardiology, just because it's long. Um, I also thought neuro was fairly difficult, but I kind of enjoyed it along with cardiology. Um, we were also back home for that one, for the finals and everything. So I think that also just kind of threw me off with that one. And then with pain, just because it was so short, it was like that one grade just determined everything for us. So um, and I will say that when you have these different classes, you will learn that there's professors that you just understand. Like I have professors that I'm like, if they're teaching the majority of this course, I don't need to study as hard because I know what they want. And then I have other professors where it's not that they don't teach well, it just something doesn't click with the way I learn. So everyone has a different learning style and the different professors hit those different learning styles. So I will say like, yes, a topic could be really simple, but like some things just don't always click the way it's given to you. So just meeting for those office hours again really helps. And then just talking to other people who do understand their teaching style and asking for tips. So it helps you remember better. And kind of saying on your toes when you get a new professor that you haven't had before, um, just to see if the way they teach lines up with the way you learn. I found infectious diseases kind of hard. Um, it's a lot of memorization mostly rather than like application. And personally, I, I don't like just memorizing things, but that was one of the key thing, things I found hard. I'll agree with Joy on that one. Um, so the especially the first exam in infectious diseases, which will be fall of your P3 year, um, it's what is this bacteria or this bug? Um, what kind of bacteria is it? 
Um, what is this drug? What kinds of bacteria do these drugs cover? And there's like a lot of variability even within classes of like coverage and like caveats here and there. And it is a lot of memorization. And like I said earlier, um, if you're like learning to understand things and then all of a sudden you're throwing a test that like you have to memorize, it can definitely throw you off. It threw me off. Um, I know to make up for my grade on the first exam, I hardly got any sleep the night before the final. Um, so yeah, I, ID, it, the first exam is definitely something to look out for. For ID, I would also suggest making friends with the upperclassmen because they will give you a bugs and drugs chart. So that is very helpful and saves a lot of time. So you know what you need to study. So upperclassmen, P1s, talk to the P2s. I'm sure someone will have one um, and it will be beautiful and save you a lot of time and tell you exactly what you need to know. So yeah, just, just ask and I'm sure someone will give it to you. Okay, so um, that was all the questions that I had prepared. Um, I do want to emphasize, though, again, like Raven said, that tutoring is always available to you all, and it's free um, every week in the message of the week. I think Shelly posts um, our contact information for tutoring, and it will be some of the P, the current P2s next year will be doing that tutoring as well. So always um, reach out to them if you ever need help. Like I said, it is free to you. And we don't want to scare you. I feel like a lot of times people make P2 year seem like this like scary, <laughs> terrible thing. But I will tell you that P2 year was my favorite year of pharmacy school. Um, make sure you have a work-life balance. It's good to, you know, have fun and you need to do that. So it's not as bad as it seems. It's doable. Um, you'll all be fine. So don't get scared. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know a lot of people were curious about areas of emphasis um, in the MBA program, so you can ask about that as well if you have those questions. <clears throat> okay, if no one has any questions, um, does anybody else want to add anything? I'll put my email in the chat just in case um, anybody has questions they don't want to share with everyone. Okay, so feel free to email me if you have questions. Um, I am in the MBA program and I'm also in the clinical area of emphasis. So if anybody has questions about either of those, um, feel free to ask. There's actually a few of us in here that are in clinical the clinical track so um there are others are other areas of emphasis though so um you can definitely get into contact with someone that's in those currently if you're curious but that's all that i have prepared so unless anyone else wants to add anything i was just going to say um if you're interested in an area of emphasis um other than clinical um we can we can line you up with somebody as well if you reach out to us Okay, well, that's all that I had. So thank you guys for coming. Hopefully we were helpful. <laughs> um, so just reach out to us if you have any questions. <laughs>